User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at Ugtastic.com. Hi, it's Mike with Ugtastic. I'm here at SCNA 2013 and I'm sitting down with Sandro Mancuso who did the talk this morning, uh, the uh, craftsmanship a few years on. Uh, thanks for taking the time to sit down, uh, Sandro. Uh, a few years on is kind of a funny theme for our interview because this is actually our third year of doing yes. an interview. I've done more interviews with Sandro than any other human being, uh, <laughs> which is three. Um, and um, what's what I find interesting is that you're continuing to be uh, an active part, and you're also growing in the community. You've come here to the first SCNA, and you're you know you're in the audience and now a couple years later you're up and, and doing a major presentation um, which I think is very interesting to see somebody who's come up in the community and and your talk was about um, you know that we have this bubble that we, we see mm -hmm. our community as being big but that's only because we're inside of it exactly. you know we don't realize that but I, I mean you have more details I'll let you talk about those details uh, about the numbers that you were and how you got, how you came to the talk of craftsmanship a few years on? Yeah, basically, because uh, of course, as as you said, like we, when we are within the communities, we think that many when we have like big numbers, like we have in London, for example, like more than thirteen hundred now. Mm -hmm. So we think that craftsmanship is everywhere. Right. But then, as soon as we start uh, looking at the uh, size of the population of developers all over right. the world, you see that you are tiny. Right. And also, the way that we see ourselves is not exactly how it's being perceived from mm -hmm. outside our little bubble. And when we have uh, guys, for example, I didn't give the names in the, during the talk, but we have guys like Dan North, uh, Ted Neward, some, some of the XP guys uh, mm -hmm. in London that, as Brian was saying in his talk, like, they are one of the pioneers of the XP, uh, extreme programming. Uh, they are not part of our movement. Uh, they, right. they have their critiques, uh, and, and that's what made me write the uh, talk about these a few years on because I think that we are not portraying the right image. Well, having the critics, I mean, I don't know if, I, I just wonder if that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, uh, there's there's that old English saying of taking the piss out of someone. Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, the, uh, that a, a Dan North type person who is known to be a little bit more of a controversial mm -hmm. Questioner of, of why you're doing things. Um, I mean, is it is it bad for us? Uh, well, uh, I I I speak to them quite often, and we exchange a lot of uh, like we, we talk in person. We exchange a lot of emails recently. Uh, I sat with Ted Neward like for almost two hours. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not bad. Like it, it, it's actually very helpful. As mm -hmm. soon as you get all these. Uh, Criticism. It's helpful because it helps us to realize our mistakes and what we can improve. But uh, but they are very smart people, mm -hmm. and they in theory should see what we see, but they don't. Right. And I think that is our fault. So I, I think that we should fix that because they are just like two voices. Mm -hmm. But remember that normally people don't go out there and say what they think. Right. So for me, when I see one person saying that thing, I imagine another thousand sharing right. the same feel. And also, I mean, I did an interview with Dan and we talked about how he created uh, this, this idea of the BDD, which has now become dogma. And I thought it was funny, these anti-dogmatic, but what he's put out is dogma. And then I think about, even when I think it was Charles Barkley said, I'm not a role model. Um, in both of those, uh, positions get taken wrong um, or, or get because there's such well-known people that both of their positions get taken out of context that BDD for Dan was an idea that he put out and he wanted to talk about and have conversations but people have turned that into a rule exactly. and with Charles Barkley people took what he said and said no of course you're supposed to be a, a role model when what he was saying is I don't look to not that I he wasn't he was against anybody ever looking at him. It was just that he said, "Don't that you should be your own role model, and that you should find your role models mm -hmm. in, in your in your own life." And that people look at what a Dan North says, 
who are in the craftsmanship movement may be looking at it, and their first exposure might be this criticism, and because they've already attached to something he said, might not give it a fair shot. Yeah, but, but I, I worked with some, some very good developers, and not all of them like to associate themselves mm -hmm. to the craftsmanship movement. And, and they're awesome developers, they're just not international speakers, but they share some of the feelings. They so, said, like, I don't want the label. I, I don't like to be, uh, when people say that I'm not professional, when I share the same values as you do, I, I'm as proficient as you are in the practices that you, you create. Mm -hmm. I just don't go out there and do certain things. So, but I don't want to be called like that I'm not professional or that I right. care. Right. I just don't treat it as a religion and, and if I find a different practice, I will use it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that uh, I've seen more and more, I think that we got a lot of people joining the craftsmanship movement, mm -hmm. but more and more, uh, some people now are looking at it differently. And I think that it's our fault. I think that we are not portraying uh, what we see. So, yeah. Well, going into this image that people have with the craftsmanship and then tying that into the user group community, um, you know, uh, a little while, uh, over a year ago, Justin Searles posted a article about that we're, we shouldn't be writing a language specific, or we shouldn't be writing, uh, creating user specific, um, language specific communities that we should be thinking more polyglots or craftsmen being a, a good way to approach uh, building a community. But if you're, if we're dealing with this criticism of the craftsmanship community and people seeing that brand as being negative, if you go off and create a craftsmanship community, people might write that off entirely because they associate it with this negative. Mm -hmm. um, now, I mean, I know that the, the craftsmanship group in, in London is pretty big, but have you dealt with anybody who's come to it and either had preconceptions or had a resistance or criticism that wasn't based on their own observations, but somebody else I had uh, that there was one guy uh, that definitely a craftsman, and he left our community, and when he left, I was so. Why is that? And 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 then we spoke to him, and he said, like you know what, uh, I don't really like the, the way that is being portrayed anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that I joined for a reason. Uh, I love doing the katas and coming and joining and sharing with people, but I'm not sure if I want to keep associating myself with that. Mm -hmm. So mainly some of the craftsmanship leaders going to complain and saying certain things. I'm not sure if I want that. Uh, on the other hand, I'm not saying that it's one person or two people. Uh, I think that it's all of us. And, and like like you said, BDD started with one idea. It moved to different ways. Agile uh, had one I ideology in there, but like it was portrayed in many different ways by many mm -hmm. different people. As the thing grows, many different people have different inter interpretation, and then they will tell other people that you have different interpretation, and, and that keeps going and going and going. Uh, and then until the message is just muddled. Exactly. So, so to date, uh, I remember because uh, I worked for a, a, a consultancy before, where we used to sell agile projects, right. and it reached the point where we didn't, uh, as a marketing strategy or speaking to clients, we wouldn't use the word agile anymore because there were so many companies resistant to the whole agility or agile mm -hmm. thing. I said, so, let's say everything that is good about agile. Talk about all the principles, but just not mention in the name. Right. Just, yeah, don't say that word. Don't exactly. say the A word. So, and I think that in a way, uh, I don't think that we are as bad the way that I was mm -hmm. saying. I just don't want to be there. Right. I, I, I'm just trying to raise the flag right now mm -hmm. that I've seen uh, some people having a very different understanding. People from outside the Grasmanship community having a very different understanding that we have from the inside. Right. So, before we get to a point where when people mention craftsmanship, so oh, no, I don't want that. Right. We need to do something. So that, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. One of the points you had towards the end of your talk was about starting communities. Mm -hmm. And um, that you have some experience, you were with the Java community, uh, and that was a very large presentation. Uh, I mean, a, a very large uh, population uh, of, uh, in the order, order of a thousand plus, and now the craftsmanship is a thousand plus. Um, over the last couple of years of being involved in these communities, is there any uh, particular advice you might want to, to, to give to somebody who's considering starting a community or just wishes they had a community in their own mm -hmm. neck of the woods? 
uh, two people is a community. Right. That's how we started, two people in a pub. Right. So, start simple. Uh, I know that for something you ask, there's all the thing of providing food mm -hmm. and having a sponsor for this. You don't need any of that. Mm -hmm. None of that. You, what you need is a Starbucks or a pub or your office. Like if you work for a company that are willing to, to let you use the office from 6.30 in the afternoon until 8.00, that's mm -hmm. what you need. And no need food. If pe people eat at home if they want. Right. right? So you need a space that can be a public space like a, 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 a Starbucks invite a few people and start. Then keep it simple. Keep the, all the overhead, because we are all busy. We all have kids and families and work a lot and travel and all sorts of stuff. So remove all the overheads. Mm -hmm. What it means, make the meetings very simple to organize. You start with a round table, with an open space. People mm -hmm. come along and decide what they want to talk about. There's no preparation for that. Mm -hmm. You just need to find one spot. That's, and it needs to have a rhythm. So that means that, for example, we are going to have our round table or our group discussion, whatever name you want to give to that, every second Tuesday of the month in this Starbucks or in this company. So as soon as you have a rhythm, the members of your community, they can plan themselves. Right. So, okay, I, I have a meeting in two weeks' time, so I will move my thing so I can attend that meeting. So that's important. And as I said, for example, use a website like meetup.com, mm -hmm. for example. They handle all the registration, uh, notification, like they, they send you reminders that they're, they're that the meeting. Coming, yeah. So they, they, uh, they know who is coming, who is not. If you have a waiting list, mm -hmm. they handle that for you. So all these things that you would struggle to do, just pay, put some money in there, just right. pay from your pocket. And, and because all these things are reasons for you not to do something. Right. So if you remove all of them, it's much easier. So that, that's, that, that's what I, I, I normally recommend. And try to make the meetings fun. Don't focus on growing our com your community. Mm -hmm. like, just focus on having quality meetings. Because the people coming, they will bring other people if the meeting is good. But right. don't focus on advertising everywhere. Yeah, so, yeah I, 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 could give, like, I could go on forever talking mm -hmm. things that you can do. Um, so, so, I mean, if you were to say, um, pick a topic, pick a place, a schedule, meetup.com, and just keep doing it. Yeah, and keep it simple. Right. Well, at, at least at the beginning, because like the advice is like these. Those are advices for people starting a brand new community. Mm -hmm. But there are many other things that uh, we can talk about as the the community grows, because like the, the the problems change, the the, the the everything change. But but we can talk about that yeah because what, what you listed and it, it, it in a way it validates I've been doing a, a little talk a lightning talk I didn't get to do it today but um, called teach yourself beginning community in 24 months mm. uh, and you know it's a play on 24 hours but you do those five things you, you, you pick a topic you pick a place you pick a schedule you just get it out there and I say meetup.com but also, that means Twitter, mm -hmm. Facebook, create a page, tell yeah. people, tell people, tell mm -hmm. people, tell people, and then um, and make it available. That's why meetup.com. And then repeat it, but give it time. You know, don't say that oh we did it one month and nobody showed up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, and, and some of that is self limitation that I expect I have to have five people at a group. Mm -hmm. uh, no, like you said, two people talking. That's already. Community. Yeah, you, you have uh, collaborate. I mean, you have communication already, and you're sharing. Mm -hmm. But give it, you know, a little bit of time for you to get into the flow of it, to understand it, to start to allow the the, the benefits to to um, and, and allow for it to even grow and give people a chance to schedule for it. There is one thing that is very important that I, I saw that uh, it varies from community uh, to community. Um, for example, I would, we made a commi commitment uh, in London that every single meeting we have would be language agnostic. Mm -hmm. We don't run any meeting that would alienate any person. But I know other communities uh, where they run um, very uh, technology specific meet meetups. So for example, the in one month you come here and we are gonna do airline. And then right. in the other month we are gonna do something else. Mm -hmm. This is very cool. However, you alienate people. Because right. like, if, for example, I'm not interested in an airline, 
that means that it will take two months for me, like from my last meeting for to my next one, next that one. I come back. And as long as I don't choose, I don't know, something weird. For that third month. Then, so so, yeah. so that, that was our problem. So we wanted to run some technology specific, but the problem is that you alienate people. So we preferred not to do that. So everything that we do, we don't alienate anyone. So all our hands-on sessions are, we give katas, we give problems, but it can be done in any language. So we always focus on bring your own language, do whatever you want. So that's very interesting because you're, so you're staying away from, um, here's a, a specific tool and here's more core concepts to think about, uh, ideas, patterns. Mm -hmm. you know, we're gonna talk about you know, singleton pattern and it doesn't matter, let's try to find some of the the ways you can get yourself into whole in Ruby or in C, whatever exactly. you do. Exactly. Just, and then maybe even those two groups can then talk about, well, you know, we have the singleton object and you know, we just... Exactly. So so we keep the, 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 the discussions at a very high level that everyone can, can discuss or mm -hmm. even write code. And the technology specific, I don't know how different cities will be, but London is special because every technology has a community there. Right. So if they want to know more about JavaScript, they go to the JavaScript community. If they want to know more about Haskell, they go to the Haskell community, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So we leave all these things to the local community, to the specialized communities, mm -hmm. and I think that they're extremely valuable. But in the cross machine community, we prefer not to do what some, some other communities do, because I probably wouldn't be interested in to go to certain meetings, and that means mm -hmm. that it would take a long time for me to go to a meeting again. Right. And then the whole point of being in a community gets lost. Thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank Maybe you. see you next year. Absolutely. You do the keynote. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.